everything changes. Well, I finally did it. Um, I got the worm screws printed, 3D printed with PLA. Come on, focus, focus. Come on. Um, yeah, see if that's there. They are. Now they do look a little bit rough around the edges, but considering they've been printed more or less in mid-air, if you like. Uh, there's no cooler on my extruder head. The only cooling I had was this. Um, obviously I've not printed all these in one go. Uh, last night I printed these, just these two. As you can see with the uh, the loops here. I printed one here and one at the other end. And these are the levelest points on my bed. Um, and I, I printed them further apart obviously to allow each one time to cool in between passes come on there we go so they are a little bit stringy on the underside of the threads but on the top sides they're okay and the outer edges if you can see are good as well and you can see just how well they interlock I can't really show you uh, one handed but when I move these about, there's no once they're locked together, there's no real play or wobble in them, so they are quite firm. You can see some of the the fray stragglers, as I call them, there on the underside. But once you rotate this gear wheel, this worm screw against this gear wheel a few times, um, what I did was I took this big gear wheel here and held it in one hand, and then the worm screw in the other. And just rotated the worm screw against the gear wheel and moved the gear wheel round a bit rotated the gear wheel until everything was sort of smooth let's do that and see if it focuses now there we go yeah so everything was sort of smooth off against each other um, i've only got one of the big gear wheels at the minute printed uh, so i'd concentrate on the worm screws before i carried on with any more so really what i should have done was had one big gear wheel one worm screw and embedded the two in together and kept them as a pair if you like but i just sort of used one big gear wheel to smooth out the roughness of the other um, now them stringy bits come on come on probably a bit too close for it there we are. those stringy bits are quite deep into the, the threads of the teeth on the worm screw and the gear wheel teeth don't really go that far down anyway so it's literally just on the lip of the teeth that you have to bed in and uh, once the whole thing's assembled you could just run it with a drill like they recommend and that'll smooth things off uh, and once you've got the whole thing running some PLA friendly lubricant or something and you know, um, just to stop them grinding themselves away any further and, and let things run all right and they're not really under any extreme stresses as far as i understand it anyway you know they're not spinning around at high speed so they shouldn't chew themselves to bits and um, being pla they probably won't last as long as they would with abs i guess but they'll do for me uh, they haven't got to be pretty because they're going to be in a box so as long as the work you know, as long as the work that's all that matters um, and that they maintain the accuracy that they should have had uh, so you know the, the crucial thing for me was to get the top edges flat uh, come on uh, to get the top edges of the of the teeth of the screw flat uh, and make sure that the outer edges are all nice and firm and they're not going to shatter away that they're thick enough um, so yeah that that's that's the results I've got and I can use them. See if I can get this camera to to play ball today. There we are, look at that straight off. So I'll just jump straight into the slicer settings really. Um, but just just before I do that, I'll just talk to you a bit about the theory of what makes this work for me. Um, it might not work straight for you. Uh, you know, you'll plug the settings in, it might not work, but it, it, it might give you a starting point. 
certainly for me it has I mean I'm using the stock head with no cooling so the theory I went with was get everything done quick move on to the next one and allow the the previous one to cool before coming back to it um, all the things I've, I've, I've read about when printing overhangs and steep angles and that say to to move slowly excuse me got, got a hair there um, to move slowly and uh, cooler temperatures for the extrusion and uh, a cooling fan but I haven't got a cooling fan nozzle I've not found one that, that fits that yet that I can print out so um, I've just got the fan at the side as you've seen the fan at the side of the bed so my theory is get the print head in get it to print quick and thick and get out move on to the next one uh, obviously the further apart they are the longer that takes before it comes back and the more that the more objects you have on the bed even longer um, but it allows them to cool down gradually rather than really really quick where they can curl and go funny and horrible uh, the results you see back there are the best I've had using these settings now these uh, they will focus for you with these these were looking good but these were under an old set of settings and what started to happen once you got beyond this point was these teeth would wilt and mush and the higher up you got the worse it got so I never even let those progress so the fact that those that I've just shown you have printed to conclusion to the end um, suggest how good they must be for me to keep them and consider them usable so right we'll just go into the settings now before this video ends up a 30 minute job <coughs> excuse me still got this cough uh, I use <coughs> <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I use Repetier Host uh, and Slicer settings within that using that little GUI here. So, uh, as you can probably see from this view, uh, I'm on the layers and perimeters settings inside the print settings tab. Uh, my layer height is 0.3, uh, it was about 0.2 for my normal prints, but I wanted to get the uh, extrusion out a bit thicker, cover more area in one go. Uh, I've turned my perimeters down to 1. Uh, the reason being I don't want the print head to linger any longer than it has to and the more perimeters it does the longer it spends on that edge lip of the, te of the teeth of the threads uh, and the more wilted and curly they go so one perimeter and then an infill and then away to the next one um, the solid layers at the top and bottom I've got two of each uh, it's just, just how I've set it there's no particular reason for that quality I've adjusted I've turned off extra perimeters if needed so it doesn't add any uh, avoid crossing perimeters but I'll keep that on anyway and detect thin walls I've not really messed around with those uh, and the seam position is aligned so that's the uh, layers and perimeters for the infill oh, I can click on it uh, fill density is 50% fill pattern honeycomb and the top and bottom fill pattern is rectilinear Combine and fill every one layers and then everything else is, is standard. Uh, I have got only retract when crossing perimeters checked because uh, I don't want no streaking and, and stuff like that. Uh, skirt and brim, the only thing I've messed around with is I've altered the loops value to 2 just to give the extruder a chance to clear out anything and get a good run and a good extrusion run before printing. Um, stops any bitting and bobbing, clears any blockages or bits of rubbish and debris left on the head I don't like that. so I've just left everything else standard uh, support material I've not bothered with the speed uh, I have upped my speeds significantly uh, I've doubled the perimeter speed virtually um, and I made some changes to my 3d printer with um, flow rate and um, I up the um, I up the drive of the stepper driver to the extruder motor it was under extruding when I up the, the speeds because it couldn't keep up the demand and it was clicking and, and stuttering so I made, I made changes there and, and now I can print at high speeds and it doesn't under extrude and I also tweaked about my flow rate as well I um, dialed that down to about 97 um, because it was starting to over extrude a little bit on the layers so that's cured that now and when I print the uh, the perimeters are, are getting nice crisper crisper edges so uh, especially if you're using a single perimeter 
it's more noticeable the, the outer shell walls are a lot a lot better at least for me anyway so some somewhere to try for you uh, so yeah the perimeter speeds have up to 50 percent small perimeters 30 percent of that value uh, external perimeters 25 percent of that value so it kind of flies around in some places but then in more critical places it slows down uh, the infill of 60 millimeters a second solid infill 45 millimeters a second top solid infill 30 millimeters a second uh, support material that's irrelevant bridges and, and gap fill not really bothered with that um, one thing I did do was I set the first layer speed to 15 millimeters a second um, because I, I like to take the time on the first layer <coughs> really get that in there make sure it's bedded in good uh, and get a nice nice bottom infill going nice and slow and get all the uh, all the extrusion joined and and, uh, and flat really so the first layer to me is crucial if that doesn't go right then nothing else will as I keep saying in all my other videos uh, what else have we got advanced yeah I did uh, one setting in the advanced and that was the infill perimeter overlap and basically that's the amount that the infill goes and touches the, the, the perimeter um, and I didn't want it to really go anywhere near the perimeter um, or as, or as um, you know not really as close as it wanted to so I've dialed that down to 3% uh, the idea behind that is I don't want the head near that edge or I want the head to spend as little time near that perimeter edge as possible so it doesn't cause it to wilt so it's literally in fills it quick and then clears off to the next next object uh, and it doesn't fill as close to the edge now with that set down to there um, depending on what you're doing depends on how much you, you change that I suppose but I found that works for me for these I'm going into filament settings excuse my shaky where I'm leaning on a counter with a funny angle so the extrusion multiplier I've set down to 0.99 here um, and in the actual printer itself it's dialed down to point, uh, to 98 so I figured that it's about 97 combined um, but you shouldn't have to worry about any of that as long as you've got your printer running smooth and extruding at the right rates don't worry so um, the first layer I print at 190 so it flows quite quite uh, fluid and it really mushes the layer the, the, the uh, the lay together if you like the strands of filament really mushes them together uh, the bed temperature I've got at 65 other layers I print at the no normal rate of 187 I've got the bed turned off for all other layers but that doesn't seem to work on my printer as I'm sure I've said in other videos so what I'll do is I'll wait till the print's about halfway up um, and it started doing the, the, the threads and then I'll just go into the printer and turn the bed temperature off or at whatever point I feel like doing it really you know, it's not, not critical after it gets about 10 mil up um, in cooling I've not really done anything in there um, I've just left that as is so I've only got a fan at the side of the bed so yeah, that's everything in there and in the printer settings it's the extruder I have uh, enabled lift and retract <coughs> excuse me <coughs> this is the, <coughs> this cough um, yeah I've, I've enabled retraction basically uh, I lift lift the nozzle or lift the head two millimeters sorry I, I, <laughs> I'm getting confused I was uh, listening to something outside um, I, I retract two millimeters of filament I lift the print head or print nozzle three millimeters above the print at 40 millimeters a second uh, no extra length on restart otherwise it starts gobbing filament at the end and you lose what you've just gained uh, minimum travel after retraction I'll discuss this in another video and it's basically how much movement needs to occur or how much travel needs to occur in millimeters before retraction comes into effect I've doubled with this but I've, I've not really seen any noticeable changes um, there probably is but I, I set this to this anyway uh, retract on layer change I've, I've had done and while, while retracting with the say that again three times um, <clears throat> basically what that does it lifts, as I say it lifts the print head moves it across the next one and brings it back down all while retracting so there shouldn't be any gobs you will see a little bit of stringing here and there 
but it goes back round and sort of mushes those back in and smooths everything out so you don't really notice any of that and that works quite well uh, I think that's it I've got nothing else in any of the other settings that I've played with no that's it so yeah that's all, all, all my settings for those um, and as you can see the results that I'm getting uh, they could probably be improved upon even further uh, if I do meddle around anymore with the slicer settings I'm certainly going to save these um, under a different name so what I'll do is I'll save give it a new name uh, probably my i3 Prusa um, dash um, sat nogs worm screws or something like that so it's unique to this I mean I might even be able to use these settings on other things with such overhangs so you know um, this is just a starting point um, but as I say I, I've got a couple I'm going to print out a couple more in case anything goes wrong and I can't reproduce them if I play around with the settings or lose them or whatever so I've got a few to hand and uh, then I'll have a go at trying to improve the, the quality and the resolution a bit I suppose so if I can get a little bit better as I say the, the, the stringiness in between the threads the teeth of the larger gear as I said don't go in that far so as long as you can wear those edges of the teeth the threads of the worm screw down against the larger gears and the movements smooth or reasonably smooth you've got to work in part so don't worry if it's pretty uh, it's just whether it works you know that's the main thing uh, hopefully this has helped you out you've, you've gained something from this and uh, you've got some some worm gears of your own that uh, you can use now uh, if, if this has helped and you you have made some some progress then why not let me know uh, on my website or in the comments uh, I like pictures so any pictures you've got of your your successes and why not let me know and with that I'll say thank you for watching and bye for now